something that I find interesting, I was thinking about this, is that what this reminds me of, what we're talking about, which is, which is Super Nanny, in the beginning, mm-hmm. in the kind of establishing footage of how dysfunctional this family is and how particularly they have a, 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 their eldest daughter who's nine has obvious anger issues, but the parents are not doing, they're not really doing a very good job of establishing boundaries. And they're, the mother and the daughter are very similar in personality. And the mother is, is shouting and losing her temper. And as such, the child is doing the exact same thing back to her. What it reminded me of in the American context, and American listeners will instantly recall this, is all of the sort of like bad kids sent to boot camp stuff on like Maury Povich, which is a talk show. But more, uh, Maury Povich is maybe maybe that's the reason why we didn't have the like Britain's fattest families kind of stuff uh, in America was because we already had Jerry Springer and Maury Povich and these shows were like you know the, the joke about Maury Povich about like him like they do the DNA test like guy named like Braden with a Y and it's like Braden you are the father like they they have like a reveal of whether or not you're the father or not of this child in question. Like this is, that's a huge thing. And Rick, uh, Jerry Springer, I was going to say Ricky Lake, but Ricky Lake was a little bit less of that. Jerry Springer was like the nadir, to use the, that, 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 the concept there, in terms of like, it was just, we found the most gross out, outre, insane, basically not a particularly nice turn of phrase, but white trash Americans mostly. And we're going to yeah. show them to you and you can gawk at them. Another example of this in America was Cops. Uh, not just not the cops in general, but the TV show cops, <laughs> where the the cops have been cancelled after a series like of um, cops shoots. as the show from the '90s, where it's literally just the cops talking into the camera and then going around filming stuff and like, well, there is some violent confrontations and things like big high stakes stuff. By and large, the majority of what you see if you watch cops back in those days was domestic violence calls and people arrested for like obviously fucked up on drugs, public intox. And that's it. Yeah, because our equivalent of this was, um, I think we did an episode on this ages ago. Road, Road Wars. Warriors. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. But cops, the, um, cops was such the, a di- the traffic cop show. Cops was a different vibe because everything about it was shot like sort of like VHS camcorder, kind of like over the shoulder camera, following the cops around, and like it would be literally like yeah. the, the 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 classic sort of concept is the cops are in the car and he's either talking while he's driving or he's leaning, to, he's turning around to you, um, and talking into the camera, um. Uh, I just realized there's, I mean, I was about to quote, unintentionally quote verbatim, uh, a Blood Brothers song that kind of references that, the, the, the concept of this show, fall asleep to the TV, the cops are talking tough, uh, to the cameras in the backseat, to the audience back home. That's, that's American reality TV. That's gross out stuff. Like lots of stand up mm-hmm. comedy would talk about like the weird, like sort of like white trash grotesques that you'd see on cops. So we had it, we just had it in a different way. Yeah. But the, bad kids getting disciplined thing was always like punitive, like scared straight stuff on Maury Povich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so to bring it to the topic of this episode, what was interesting to me was that's, that's my kind of lead in. That's my, my expectation that what, I, what, I'm, what I'm familiar with in this kind of genre. And hmm. instead it was like, I would say it's a lot more humane, but I do think there's an intention, hmm. as we discussed earlier, for you to be like, yeah. what brats, what spoiled little bastards, what horrible parents, aren't they stupid? And that's yeah. not well. This is kind of what I'm getting at. I think I think the unique feature of British reality TV is that it used to construct things sort of as experiments. Like let's put people in this like pressure cooker situation and see if we crack. Whereas like the the um the stuff you're describing from America is much more like documentarian. Yes. Like let's let's find freaks and film them. Yes. Um. Whereas in Britain it's like let's take someone who's maybe like they're on the verge of being a freak and see if we can cause them to have a full mental breakdown. <laughs> And so Super Nanny, I would say, is at like the milder end yeah. in the sense that like, so Joe Frost, who presents the show, is genuinely like a, somewhat of an expert in childcare. Like she worked as a nanny for a long time and she has like a theory of like a kind of, uh, I guess, like a humane way to discipline children, you might say. Like she's opposed to like smacking children, hitting them, whatever. Um, and she has this kind of system of, of her of her own device or that's like adapted from from kind of things constructed by psychologists about how to kind of discipline children in a way that's like healthy, basically. Um, and so the, the premise of the show is that they send her into these homes uh, where people have like the, the, the most badly behaved children imaginable. And she attempts to like teach the parents to like manage their their children's behavior. And so and I, and I from what I gather I think Joe Frost was kind of doing something a bit like this before, but just not for television. Um, however, um, it's the so I don't think that what she's doing is bad because she's actually just trying to help. 
I would say what she was doing, like everything she did was firm, but you could tell that she was compared to Denise, the mother, she was always being very calm, but firm with the children, were specifically with the, the, the eldest daughter. Uh, whereas the mother was struggling to not lose her temper. And it, it was interesting because I guess I, like I said, just to, 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 to rephrase it, in the kind of Maury Povich vein of they, they have all the black and white footage with like, you know, disrespectful rap music playing in the background with kids being like, I'm a badass and you can't tell me what to do. Fuck you. I hate my parents. Fuck school. I do drugs. Blah. And then like the, the smash cut to them basically being screamed at by a drill sergeant and crying. And that was the point was sort of scared. scared <laughs> stuff. That's kind of what I, w- I was sort of expecting, like more disciplinary. I mean, it being Britain and Britain's famous love affair mm-hmm. with the idea that children should be harshly treated. Oh, well, if it was made in the 70s, you know, it would, all, it would all be like close up footage of children being caned. And then, you know, but it's interesting we asked this Lib Dem peer what he thought of the show. And he said, well, it was bloody brilliant. Is that is that everything about the lead up to Joe's arrival seems like she's going to come in and crack the whip? You know what I mean? And what she does is, is, is resolute. Which she kind of is, but in a like, but in a, in a, in a way that's in a modern actually way. appropriate, yeah. I think, as regards like, trying yeah. to resolve the obvious dysfunction here. Yeah. But meanwhile the the producers, you know, they they're getting this footage and then they they're like, you know, they they're doing the Bri- the British reality TV producer thing of making everyone look like as much of a fuckhead as possible. Um uh, I think there are there are several things that leapt out at me immediately in this show. First of all, that the, the dad comes across like an anime villain in every single to camera piece that he does. He's doing this kind of like frown at the camera and it's very much like, I will vanquish my enemies. The children will learn. But he seems like genuinely, it, 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 like he struggles to express how he's feeling. And he has that kind of like, I feel as though, I'm not saying this is reserved, this is solely a, mm. a, a British or an English thing. But without guessing anything about his background, there's a type of English guy who has been so traumatized by bullying in school that he sort of it's bullied him out of having a personality or taking a position on anything like yeah being just yeah. like mr read the room and make sure that i don't uh i don't say anything contrary to what the room is saying kind of because like it's just this sort of it, and i'm not trying to be flippant about it because i mean like bullying is a huge problem and it feels like in britain it's kind of like celebrated but he strikes me is odd in the sense that like I don't doubt the sincerity of him saying that like this is very distressing of what's been happening, but like his ability to communicate emotion seems quite limited. And yeah, well, he's extremely like his vibe is I've once again returned home from work. It is Tuesday evening. My wife has lost control of the children yet again. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like that. He's sort of he's like he's like the Terminator dad, but like in the most just kind of like. He, he's like, I will once again follow instructions. He's very gentle with the kids and he just, he seems, you know, he, he doesn't lose his temper at all, but he seems sort of like at a loss as to what to do. But then also, yes, he does have this like, um, I, I the only way that I can express my emotions is by apparently uh, waterboarding myself and sleep depriving myself. And now that's uh, having just, just done 72 hours of like complete psychic trauma. I'm now going to give this interview to the camera. Like it's odd. Yeah. It, it it it's it, it, there, and there's a bit of a. Here's where I really could use your expertise. Mm-hmm. These people strike me as being portrayed as relatively middle class. Certainly, the neighborhood they live in, their home, their car, etc. But I don't know really how to read what is supposed to be the takeaway. Like what the audience is supposed to take away from this It's never subtle in Britain like in terms of what's intended for British audiences. But I'm not as good at picking up on it. So I would say so. This is this is the Cook family, right? So if you want to if you want to look up this uh, Super Nanny episode, it's on YouTube, and I, I would recommend it. I think it's like a, it's an er example of Super Nanny. It's like forty minutes long, and I think it's a, it's a great it's a great bit of Britonology as a companion piece. Um, so yeah, the Cook family they live in a kind of uh, like I guess a Barrett home, basically, but like a big Barrett home with yeah. you know like a big garden. But it's like they have a Range Rover. Yeah, they're such a they're such a tight of british family where like they're kind of they're affluent in that sort of like blair era way um and the dad is like very much like mondeo man he has like he has what i would call like normal southern british guy voice it's not it's not a working class voice but it's also not remotely posh it's kind of like yeah you know well what can you do that kind of voice yeah well i work in it um 
Uh, whereas his wife actually sounds a bit posh. She's very like, well, that's not acceptable, is it? Um, but then that suggests to me that the what we're dealing with, uh, where the wife is concerned, is a kind of like hyacinth bouquet situation. We're we're it's she's she's kind of she's she's more she's more aspirational than the husband because it strikes me as she's not she's not posh enough for the voice. Otherwise, she wouldn't be in this Barrett home with this man. That that's my British vibes based analysis here. 